So if you're looking to get into a top tech company here in America, especially with fields like machine learning and data science, we have an amazing conversation with a senior data scientist at Amazon who's going to talk about his journey, things he's learned working in fang type companies. And also we have a very special bonus at the very end talking about mistakes when joining a fang company. So check it out. Hey friends, welcome to Shine Coaching. I'm Rob, and at Shine Coaching, we love helping people be successful in their cross-cultural journey, especially their job search. And so today we're going to be talking about data science, FANG, big tech, where all these people are trying to get jobs here in America. And Naveed is going to be telling his story, his experience, and even some mistakes to avoid at the very end. But Naveed, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. Hey, Rob, thank you so much for having me on your channel. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm able to give some tips to your audience that can help them uh, achieve what they're looking for in the data science uh, profession. Uh, so I'm originally from uh, Bangalore, India, and uh, currently working at uh, Amazon as a senior data scientist uh, here in Seattle. Before Seattle, I was in Dallas, uh, Texas for uh, about three years. And yeah, we'll go into more details uh, in the later part of the videos, but that's my quick introduction. Fantastic. Well, let's jump in kind of with your journey. You've had some different backgrounds, you've worked with different companies. So give us a quick summary of your journey, which has helped you get to this top kind of data science, machine learning field in, in a FANG company. So like I said, uh, originally from Bangalore, that's where uh, I went for my undergrad, uh, did my undergrad in electronics uh, and communications engineering. And right after my undergrad, I worked with uh, Fidelity Investments for about a year as a Java developer. And in the year 2014, uh, that's when I came to the United States uh, to pursue my master's in information science. I did a specialization in uh, data science and machine learning at the university. Uh, and what made you want to do information science? So during my time uh, at Fidelity Investments, uh, although I was primarily working on developing Java applications, I had a couple of uh, engagements with financial analysts who were working with uh, data. And that sort of led me to the curiosity of uh, learning more about what can we do more with, with this data available can we use to solve specific business problems. And that sort of led me into the path of uh, exploring uh, data science and machine learning. And then at that time, I was also uh, interested in pursuing my master's. And then I came across this course at UT Dallas uh, that was offering uh, this nice mixture of uh, data science, machine learn learning, along with a couple of business courses. And I thought that would be the right fit for me uh, at that point in time. And that sort of uh, led me uh, to come here to the U.S. to pursue my master's. During my master's, I also got an opportunity to, uh, to work at a Boston-based uh, startup uh, during my summer internship called Nanigans. Uh, it was basically an uh, ad tech startup. Uh, now it's acquired by another company called Sprinkler. But uh, at Nanigans, I was primarily working on uh, optimizing customers' ad spend uh, using uh, various regression techniques. Uh, and this was sort of my first uh, corporate slash uh, startup experience in the United States. And uh, definitely, it was a wonderful experience. And I thoroughly enjoyed my time at Boston as well. And then fast forward after my summer internship, I came back to Dallas uh, to complete my master's. After completion of my master's, I worked with KPMG for about a year as a business, business intelligence developer, where I was working on developing uh, internal uh, reporting applications uh, using tools like ClickView. Then in 2017, uh, I got an opportunity to uh, come here to Seattle uh, to work for uh, Amazon as a business analyst in the fraud and abuse prevention space uh, uh, main objective was to uh, make sure that the customers are having a trustworthy shopping experience. All the way from a business analyst to a senior data scientist at Amazon, the journey has been pretty phenomenal in terms of uh, solving complex business problems and challenges that needed to be solved efficiently and uh, at scale. I had to like deliver a bunch of uh, machine learning projects uh, that would help with overall business goals. And this helped me to get to the level where I am today. I've become a senior data scientist at a top uh, tech company. That's awesome, Naveed. Now let's get nitty gritty. Let's okay. talk about what are some of the more effective ways that people are solving business problems in these top thing companies? Uh, that's a great question, Rob, uh, because a lot of times as data professionals, uh, we get a lot of requests from business stakeholders uh, uh, in terms of coming up with new problems that needs to be solved, right? And most of the problems are interesting, which is great. But as data professionals, we have only uh, so much limited time that we can 
tackle X number of business problems, right? We just cannot solve all the business problems in the world uh, that are affecting uh, a certain company. So it's very important uh, to scope out what's the impact of the business problem that's being presented to you, right? Uh, and this can be done by using some data exploration or even just asking your business stakeholder, right? Like, what is the downstream impact of this business problem that you're asking me to solve? And that becomes a way of prioritization so that you're working on problems that really matter to your company and to your end customers. So that's one aspect. The second aspect would be how do you actually solve them, right? So I always um, suggest a couple of my mentees uh, who are looking at ways to solve business problems that always break a complex problem into smaller fragments, right? And try to achieve or solve those smaller fragments and work towards the end goal. And again, there are like multiple ways of solving a specific uh, problem. Maybe you have like uh, solution one, which might be 70% effective at solving a problem, but can be done maybe within two weeks, right? And a solution two, which might be 80% effective, but takes two months to solve it. So what I suggest there is you can start with solution one so that immediately the business is having the impact from your solution while you're working on solution two, which has a better effective rate. So that would be some suggestion. Again, uh, during all of the solutioning, it's very important to keep your uh, stakeholders in alignment with what you're proposing. Right, because ultimately you're working towards achieving the specific business goals. And it's important that the business stakeholders are kept in the loop and they know what exactly is being done. So those would be some suggestions in terms of how to solve a specific business problem at FANG. This video is brought to you by the Career Success Journey, Chai and Coaching's new online course. This course is geared towards teaching you everything you need to know to land a desired job here in America. International students face many extra obstacles in their job search. We're gonna address those issues and empower you with the knowledge and skills needed to overcome job search challenges. Learn about LinkedIn, networking, the US job market, interview prep, and much more. We've seen the results of students getting amazing jobs, even impossible dream jobs, which shows this content really works. Join our live eight week spring 2022 cohort starting on February 6th. For more information and registration, go to careersuccessjourney.chiangcoaching.com. Don't forget to invite your friends too. Cheers. Now I wanna get your advice on how can people choose uh, machine learning algorithms for solving these problems? So I believe it, it largely depends on the problem that's uh, being solved, right? And one obvious choice is uh, choosing the evaluation metrics of every algorithm, right? For example, if you're trying to solve uh, classification problems, there are metrics like precision, recall, or accuracy of the algorithm, or for regression type problems, you have like the root mean square error. So that's one aspect. The other aspect would be in terms of like the inference timing of these algorithms, right? For example, ultimately, once you build an ML uh, model, you want to deploy it into production. And there could be multiple ways of deploying. For example, do you want to deploy it in like an offline fashion where maybe the inference time might not be that important. But uh, a lot of times you have to deploy these models in real time where the inference time plays a very crit critical role, right? For example, if your prediction is going to ultimately appear on a UI and a customer is waiting for your model's prediction, you want that prediction to be returned in maybe a couple of milliseconds, right? And not all algorithms have the same type of inference uh, timing. So it's very important that you have a trade-off between what's your inferencing time, what's the performance of a certain algorithm. So that could be the second aspect. The third aspect could be just in general choosing between a supervised uh, way of building a machine learning model or an unsupervised way, right? Because you don't always have the luxury of having a labeled data set to train a supervised model. And in that case, you can go ahead with uh, some of the unsupervised uh, methodologies like clustering, where you can at least start with some initial data exploration and get started while your training data set is being curated by maybe a couple of auditors or people who can actually label so that you can go ahead and uh, train a supervised machine learning model. So these would be some ways of choosing which way to go forward with uh, when it comes to like picking an algorithm. Thanks so much for sharing that, Naveed. My friends, if you guys are learning some great stuff, be sure to give a like and thumbs up to say thanks to Naveed, uh, sharing from his experience. And our chai question for you guys in this video is what companies are you wanting to work for? Tell us in the comments. Naveed has some awesome work experience at companies like Fidelity, KPMG, now Amazon. 
So let us know which kind of companies you guys are applying to and looking for jobs for in the comments. And now, Naveed, let's talk a little bit about what are the skill sets that these big tech companies are looking for when hiring new data scientists? Given the wide scope of problems that our data scientists solve, a lot of emphasis is given on the science breadth of, of a candidate, right? But what will definitely give you an advantage over uh, others is having the science depth knowledge, right? Knowing the nitty gritties of the working of an algorithm or the mathematical details of how exactly an algorithm is working. So that would be point number one. The second aspect is uh, being good at programming, uh, right? Because programming languages like Python is pretty essential uh, when it comes to building machine learning models or uh, even like data exploration using uh, some of the libraries like Pandas or NumPy. Having good uh, SQL skills, I think that's critical as well because as a data scientist, you have to work on data extraction, data cleansing, data aggregation, for which uh, languages like SQL or Hive are, are pretty important. Third aspect would be just around uh, product sense, uh, because as data scientists, we also have to work with a lot of product managers, right? And so being good at product intuition, being able to come up with metrics that can effectively measure the goals of, of a specific uh, stakeholder or, or a business team, that's an important aspect. And in general, being a good communicator, because essentially we are, uh, as data scientists, we are messengers of insights uh, from data to your stakeholders, right? Uh, so being effective in, in storytelling and building a narrative around the solutions that you're building or the insights that you're gathering. So yeah, uh, along with this and then uh, A-B testing is another crucial aspect that is important to learn as data scientists. Uh, just, and yeah, I think overall, these would be some of the skill sets that will uh, give you an edge over others. Amazing. Before we get to our final bonus tip, we're going to be making another video with Navid as well, talking about just some ex more expert tips for a data science career. So we're going to be more focused on that, especially for job seekers. So be sure to check out that other video we're making as well to help data science job seekers get into that career. But this bonus tip is what are kind of some mistakes that you see people do when they're just joining a fame company like an Amazon? What can they look out for and what are these mistakes they can avoid? joining a company like this? So I wouldn't call these as mistakes per se, but just a general advice would be not to have a sense of contentment once you join a fan company, right? Because I personally feel that's where the real challenge begins because of the nature of problems that you get to solve, right? Given the scale at which these companies operate and the type of complex and challenging problems, you really have to bring your A game pretty much every day uh, at work and sort of uh, be consistent and continually improve on your performances and being able to deliver quickly and efficiently and being able to invent on behalf of your customers. I think these would be some aspects that you should always keep thinking about uh, while you're working uh, at a FANG. The second aspect would be finding a good mentor at these companies early on in your career would, would definitely be helpful because having a veteran who can guide you through the internal uh, workings or the internal challenges that might be specific uh, to companies would be really impactful for your uh, long-term growth. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to just be a technical mentor or just a business mentor. It can be having two mentors, right? One who can guide you from a business perspective, and then the other mentor can guide you from a technical growth perspective. So yeah, get a mentor early on in your career if uh, you are to join a FANG or any, any company uh, for that matter, uh, because guidance definitely helps. Yeah, uh, that would be my general suggestion. I totally agree. Getting mentors, so important, so helpful. That has definitely helped me a lot in my career and really advocate that for you guys. I mean, this has been incredible. I've learned so much. Uh, and I know it's going to be super helpful for people who are thinking about data science, machine learning, these big tech companies. So thanks so much for sharing your experience. Thank you so much, Rob, uh, for having me again. And hopefully these uh, guidance and suggestion helps your viewers. Yeah. Definitely. I know it will. My friends, be sure to connect with us online on social media, like on Instagram, LinkedIn. Be subscribed to the newsletter to get more information about upcoming events and resources and to learn more about our career success journey course, which is releasing soon. We'd love for you guys to be part of that. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time at Shine Coaching. Cheers.